think this place looks good enough for now. Holy sick. Well, hello. Perhaps some of you don't understand that this surrounding doesn't look like Israel. I'm glad you came up with this idea. Here's the problem. It's our Faraday van. If you've watched us for a long time on Bearded Bible Brothers, you know what this means. If you're new to the concept, I'll tell you right now. It means we're hiding just a little bit. That means we've been given a message that we have to say that doesn't have time to go through six months of post-production and approval yeah. and this and that. It means we're going to hide, not get any approval from anyone else. We're going rogue. Say what we think uh -oh. and upload it immediately. That's what this van means. And that we have to be in this van because we have to be mobile. And of course, it's lined with aluminum foil to block any transmissions from anyone that might be uh, getting to us. First of all, let us say thank you so, so much. Roadmap yes, to Armageddon has launched. We only have two episodes left in this series, and it has been a roller coaster, but a good one. Yes. We've been getting views, we've been getting comments, and guys, we don't even care if your comments are not so nice or if they're super nice, because there's a lot of both. Uh, we're just happy that y'all are watching it. You know, it kind of encourages me when we get the negative comments. No, what really encourages me, guys, is you got to understand that when we're creating these series, we're delivering a message that God gives us and he places within our heart. And it's a burden that we have to release to the world. And it's not always to the church. We love the church. We love the sheep. But sometimes it's not about grooming you sheep. It's about reaching the lost with the gospel of Yeshua. And what's been so encouraging about Roadmap to Armageddon is the lost have been watching it and they have been leaving their comments, sometimes negative, sometimes hateful. I mean, we have Muslims watching our show, and you may read the Allahu Akbar and Death to Israel, but be patient with them, guys, and witness to them about the gospel of Yeshua, because they're actually asking us questions. We're getting questions like, what does this mean? What's the next prophetic event? What does your Bible say about the end times here? What does your Bible, uh, the Jews, say about this here? And that means they're watching it. They're, they're engaging. And that seed the Holy Spirit is planting in their hearts is going to sprout up. The word of the Lord does not return unto him void, but accomplishes that which is set forth to do. And they are going to come into the kingdom based upon this witness. And we're excited about that. I know it's a tough thing to ask. I know what all of you love to do on the internet when you see mean comments. You like to fight. You get on there, you're like, oh yeah, check out these two fingers. They're stronger than yours. Come it, come it, come it, come it. Da -da 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 -da. And boop. Caps lock. <laughs> Here's the thing I'm going to request out of you, and this is something that, um, you know, I've heard people tell me all the time, Josh, I wasn't called to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. eh, we're going to debate that later. I wasn't called to go tell people about Jesus. I can't do it. I'm scared. I'm nervous. This is a fantastic platform. Yeah. Go to the comments section. Read these comments. When you see people saying mean things or you see people questioning theology or stuff like that, reach out in love. Mm -hmm. Reach out with the love of Yeshua. It's the safest place you can be. The only thing they can do is say a mean comment and they get deleted by us. I'm kidding. <laughs> but it, it, this is a great place for you all to minister to other people. But today, with all this niceness and kindness and accolades, it's still, this is not the scary thing we've come to you about. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is not the purpose. purpose. We just wanted to start by loving you. Yeah. Trust me, my brother has a purpose for the van because he always has something to say that isn't safe to say in public. Well... Let's start with the headline, a very important headline that came out today. And you are the one who sent me this headline. I know. This is actually my fault. I'm blaming him, but I sent him this headline and had no idea that he would immediately respond being like, okay, get in the van this way. But uh, maybe some of you have seen it. Uh, this was sent to me by a close friend of mine yeah. on X. And the headline reads, Biden slammed on social media after announcing Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter Sunday. So Easter from now on is the day of transgender visibility? Well, I'm going to go ahead and read this quote because okay. I didn't necessarily know what that headline meant at first yeah. either. And I don't like to read those kind of articles. I'm going to be honest with you. But here's the literal quote, okay. quote unquote, red letters, not Jesus, but this is the deal. I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lies, lives and voices, sorry, Freudian slip, the lives and voices of transgender people throughout our nation and to work towards eliminating violence and discrimination against all transgender, gender non-conforming and non-binary people, end quote. Now, some of you may be disgusted by that. Uh, some of you may be shrugging, eh, 
Whatever, you know, what does it have to do with me? Uh, some of you non-believers who may be watching us, you don't believe in Jesus. You may be saying, I'm mocking us, you know, oh, I knew y'all guys were hateful and y'all are, you're going to jump on this. You're out. You're outraged. You're angry. No, we're not angry. I'm actually in all truthfulness ecstatic about this declaration. And not in a way that you may think, oh, Chewy, what's that? Are they close? <laughs> all right, thank you. Okay, guys, in, in all truthfulness, uh, Satan may think he just declared war on the church, um, on this day that's supposed to be the focus of Jesus dying and resurrecting again. Um, but I believe that this is God using this opportunity to dupe Satan. That this is exposure finally coming to something that he was pushing under the radar for a long time. You know, he was he was counterfeiting. He was he was playing right into God's plan with this and. It, Let's let's look at this scripture real quickly. What the Bible says about what he yeah. just said. Luke 12, 2 through 3. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. Guys, this year, Easter is no longer pretending to be the Christian Passover or Resurrection Day. If now, you know. I know that all of you have the friends who have tried to come over to your Easter egg painting party and said, Ishtar, and started smashing eggs and whatnot. And then you were like, calm down. It's really not that bad. And then they're like, I bet there was a Christmas tree in here too. And then they started like trying to anoint the place and throw things around. And there's been this thing within the Christian church for a long time of, oh, well, do I accept that this was a bad thing yeah. and just rebrand it like it's resurrection day yeah, yeah, yeah. do i just say no all the way together what it's really separated this world and what caleb's about to tell you into these two separate holidays if you will you have the christian holiday of easter yeah. and you have the jewish holiday of passover and see typically those days coincide pretty closely so you can feel oh you know it's it's really the right day that we're celebrating Yeshua's resurrection. But this year it's not, guys. This year, uh, Ishtar, Easter, is coming uh, tomorrow. Today is the 30th of March. And Passover doesn't occur until the end of April. I believe it's April 22nd. Uh, that's a really large gap, but I believe it's prophetic and it was designed by God for this very uh, important purpose uh, because they can't masquerade as one another, you know. Easter cannot masquerade, cannot counterfeit, Satan cannot use it to counterfeit anymore. And that declaration from Joe Biden essentially declares what was there from the beginning. And that's, this is the feast of Ishtar, Ishtar's feast. So we're going to go into... So here's the deal. So here's the deal. So you don't have to Google it. So you don't blame Wikipedia for being a lie. So you, you can't you know, be ignorant to any longer. Caleb's going to officially tell you how, what Ishtar is and what Easter is because you've heard whisperings, but you clogged your ears because you wanted bunnies and you wanted eggs and we get it. We're not sitting here trying to be legalistic, but we are going to share with you the actual history and what it means. So Ishtar is the Babylonian goddess of sexuality, Dang it. sexual perversion, Come on. of, of uh, earth worship, of war. All of these put together is, is one gnarly thing. She's the, con children's holiday. She's the consort goddess of the sun god, of Marduk. Yeah. Um, and their son is Nabu, or actually Tammuz. You know, this is Satan's very first a uh, pagan religion, his f very first stab at idolatry that began with Nimrod. Nimrod is Marduk, his wife Semiramis is Ishtar, the queen of heaven, their son Tammuz became Nabu. Uh, this is where it all began, and after the scattering of languages, all of the original pagan religion started with this fact. You can look at Egyptian, you know, with, with Horus and Osiris and Isis. It's the, the clone of it you can find in Greek mythology and Roman mythology. It all began with Babylonianism. And so when you have this uh, Assyrian, Babylonian, Akkadian, all nations that started by Nimrod uh, with this worship, Ishtar's feast began with the beginning of the new year. This happened in the spring, just like with the Jews. The Jewish calendar starts in the spring. Well, uh, it was called the Akitu Festival. This is what they began. It was a 12-day festival that coincided uh, closely with the spring equinox. And it concluded with the Feast of Ishtar on day 12. Now, the way they would celebrate this was, was pretty gnarly, guys. You had uh, temple prostitutes. Um, 
you know, where, where the eggs come into play. Well, temple prostitutes where you had men and women who would do role reversal. They would dress up in different roles. They would have sex with virgins. Uh, those virgins would get pregnant. And then uh, a year and three months later, at the time that the next Akitu festival would come around, uh, around Ishtar's festival, they would sacrifice some of the children and would take the blood and would decorate the eggs with it. You know, eggs were the symbol of fertility. And it goes even gnarly, more gnarly into that when you start focusing on what Semiramis did and, and calling herself d divine, the queen of heaven, and all the mythology about. But the point being is uh, this was a holiday where Satan glorified in sexual perversion and homosexuality and role reversals where you get transgenderism and thus this declaration that Easter is this day of transgender acknowledgement is exactly what it began as. The which veil is, is removed. It's crazy. It's crazy because usually we're getting on here saying, oh snap, look what Joe Biden Jr. did. He came in here and did this and for once they're being honest. They're taking this day because people think that Easter is really the celebration of Yeshua being resurrected, but that yeah. didn't happen on Easter, yeah. right? That happened uh, on the, f the Feast of First Fruits. Yes. So that has to happen after Passover. <laughs> and, and as we can see, we got a gap here this it's, time. It's almost Not a just a little gap, talking like a month gap. So clearly this couldn't be the thing. So we're seeing this transparency, and that's why Caleb said he's not angry. We want to educate you not to be legalistic, but the, mm -hmm. to understand Satan is getting so brazen at this point and yeah. so bold that he's not only saying like, hey guys, guess what? Uh, you've heard this has happened. I'm having this officially declared a holiday by the United States of America, the same government that we live in, who has taken uh, prayer out of schools, who's yes. taken the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse, who uh, for the longest time legalized abortion, which is the murdering and sacrificing yeah. of children, who uh, on and on and on have done all these things. They tried to convince you that separation of church and state was something mandated by the U.S. Constitution, yeah. which it is not. It's nowhere in the U.S. Constitution. Yes. That's a completely other topic we can talk about sometime. Yeah. But all this has happened, and now here we are saying we have an official day to celebrate this transgender, yeah. and and all he's done is take this holiday that already existed for this purpose all these years ago and officially stamped it on our belief system. But by doing this, yeah. by America doing this, because we've talked, if you watched uh, our series, we've talked about how uh, the sins nationally by the government that you live in, just as Israel had to have atonement on a level from what the king did on down, we're facing now the curse that's going to come against us as a nation that we're about to talk about because of what our government's doing. And that's why the real Kakodesh, the Holy Spirit, really moved on me that it's time to make a very important proclamation ourselves and make this episode. Uh, it's very rare that I, I get into the safe lore territory, but I, I'm saying the Holy Spirit moved on my heart. You can take this for what you will. You can believe it or not. But he told me that there is coming a moment of decision. There are two days of decision coming up. One is uh, the day of Ishtar, Easter tomorrow. That is a day of decision for the church, for the body of Messiah. And the other day is the day of Passover coming up, 2024, the day of decision for the Jewish people. What are these days and what do they mean? Uh, for Christians, for believers, uh, you must ask yourself, who do you bow to? Who matters most to you? Uh, now that this revelation has come to you about Easter, about Ishtar, uh, who is your God? This moment of decision now falls upon you. Um, very soon you're going to be seeing a series that we shot in Israel also called Josiah and the Last Reformation, in which we discuss uh, these warning signs that the prophets gave to Israel, to Judah, of the coming of Babylon. Judgment is coming. I believe judgment is coming to America and judgment is coming to Israel, guys. And we may not be able to escape it. Josiah humbled himself before God. He repented and it pushed back God's timetable of destruction. But now we are coming to that decision. Tomorrow, in your heart, you must decide. Uh, our churches have become a place of apostasy. I call it the end times or last days apostate church movement. The gospel is not being preached. Sound doctrine is not being preached. Instead, uh, we have gotten into idolatry. It's been a gospel of self, of me. It's been a self-help doctrine, you know, focus on self, worship self. Our houses of worship have become houses of entertainment. And it's all about uh, making you feel good when you leave so that you can, you know, donate and you can keep those millions of dollars coming in because they're expensive buildings to upkeep. I understand that, guys. 
Um, but the church is not the church of the day. If you've watched the Bearded Bible Brothers for the past five years, that has been a primary message that God has given to us, is you are the church, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, it's not that building, but you, uh, the church as a whole, as an institution, has kicked God out of the boundaries of that building and said to the Holy Spirit, do not show up on Sunday, this is our plan, and it's not God's plan. And so it's time for us as a nation to repent because judgment is coming. And how that judgment affects you personally and your family depends on the decisions. Once again, we're getting texted from all people. What's going on? Um, what's going to happen to you and your family? Because we know as a nation, judgment is coming. And to Israel, judgment is coming to Israel. And, and at Passover time, when it is coming, guys, they're going to have to make the decision. Because you got to understand, all Jews celebrate Passover, secular or believing Jews. You know, it, this is that time, you know, even if they don't believe in God, they're going to jump on the bandwagon of Passover because they get time off. It's part of a cultural identity uh, of tradition and all these things that they're going to uh, carry on. But they're going to have to decide. And, and, and I, I'm very positive in seeing how more and more Jews are coming to, to crying out to God because of the October 7th events. They're going to have to decide, do they believe on the God of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov? Or are they going to be secular? Are they going to be atheists? Are they going to uh, believe on, on, on the things of this world? Are they going to cry out to God and turn their hearts back to God? And that's the decision they have to make. And judgment is coming as a nation. Guys, um, corporately, we as a nation have not repented before God. See, this is the problem. That Before you all guys get all angry about everything you just said, I really hope you do go to a church that's super awesome. And I hope that your church there is like, oh, yes, we listen to God and God is here and everything's good. He's talking about things on a large on a large yeah. level. And we're talking about reform that needs to take place everywhere. Yes. There is no church. There is no one place that is perfect. Yeah. So don't just look at this and get offended that we said don't go to church. We didn't say that. We said that we need to repent for anything in our lives, yep. anything in our churches, anything where we said what we want takes precedent over listening to the Holy Spirit and what he wants. Yeah. But on this corporate level, like he's talking about, everything that we said earlier about what the government's done, well, they keep doing the more things. Yeah, All this, the, Ten Commandments. the problem that we're facing when it comes to this curse we that I talked about earlier is the fact that now the United States has abandoned its greatest ally in Israel. And instead of defending in this time where we're facing um, the UN calling for this ceasefire and everything like that, the United States has taken a step back and they're trying to, it looks like what, pushing for dual state for all these ideas where we give away the land. Yeah, this is very important guys because um, United Nations Security Council has been trying to pass a resolution demanding, I'm reading it right here, immediate ceasefire in Gaza. America has stopped that until just recently we allowed that vote to go through. Hamas remains in power. 130 Israeli captives uh, are still being held in Gaza. And here we are declaring, stop fighting, stop trying to save your people. Um, this is very important. This is one of many things. Uh, I want to go into Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Why this is so important scripturally, Josh. Genesis 12, 1 through 3 says, The Lord has said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. So America as a nation, by going with his United Nations security policy, council policy, passing that resolution, has placed us under a curse. Guess what? We were already under a curse. Dang it. We just recently, as a nation, denied the, uh, we changed policy. Um, we had a policy um, that was passed through Trump that Jewish settlers in the Waste Bank were recognized, just as we recognize uh, Jerusalem be the capital of Israel. We moved our uh, embassy to Jerusalem. Um, now we have switched uh, that policy and we have declared uh, under international law the illegitimacy of Jewish people to live and reside in the God-given territory of Judea and Samaria. And not only that, we, America, is putting sanctions on those Jewish people, on those communities, on the individual people who have decided to live in that territory that God gave them. Sanctions! It's not like, you know, this is Iran, here's a terrorist nation who's trying to destroy America and Israel and we're sanctioning them on Jews, individuals. What's a sanction? What's a sanction? Sanctions, financial, financial, um, we're destroying their lives financially. 
We're, we're trying to take away their livelihood, their ability to buy, sell, and trade on the international stage. And if they would ever have to, any dealings with America, they are illegitimate. They are null and void. That's one of the many things um, that we are doing. Um, as Josh mentioned, we're still trying to divide the land of Israel. Yes. Uh, back in 2020, on January 28th, we came into our fair day van and we warned with the Abraham Accords that dividing the land of Israel would place the nation under a curse. Mm -hmm. God warns in Joel 3.2. This is part of the judgment of his sheep and goats. Those who divide my land, who try to divide the land of Israel, they will be cursed. Those who scatter the Jewish people will be cursed. And here we are again, not learning from the mistakes of our past. What happened after January 28th? COVID unleashed upon the world. Those world powers, Bibi Netanyahu and Donald Trump were removed from power for going along with this plan. And now again, the cry goes out from our nation, divide the land and reward the terrorist organization of Hamas for the murdering of innocent civilians, women and children, the rape and pillage of these people. We're going to reward them with the Jewish state and carve it up like a turkey. Now, what do you think is going to happen to us as a nation? The curse is placed upon us. Judgment is coming. It's only a matter of time. But we can be spared individually as families and, and as people from that judgment to come. And that's why it's so important. Yeah. We've discussed before um, why, you know, Again, people want to get legalistic about this, and yeah. we're like the least legalistic. I'm we're being honest with you. I know you don't. I know you don't think this, uh, but I'm, I'm, trust me, we are. Yeah. But the problem is, is that once God makes a promise, mm -hmm. a covenant, He can't ever go back on it. Yeah. His word is resolute. So when He said to Abram, "Hey, here's the deal. I'm going to bless everybody that blesses you, and I'm going to curse everybody that curses you," that's a done deal for eternity. Yeah. So everybody thinks now, oh, what's the big deal? Oh, these Jews, they don't even love Yeshua. Oh, blah, blah. Irrelevant. Yeah. Irrelevant to the fact that yeah. there was an eternal covenant made. You want that out of God. That's how you're getting into heaven <laughs> because he made an eternal covenant. That if you believe on his son, he's going to let you in. Yeah. But he's, at, he's asking, he's drawing this line in the sand today and saying, hey, here's the deal. Tomorrow, when Christians face Easter, Ishtar, are you going to give in to the delicious Cadbury eggs? Are you going to give in to those nasty peeps that some people like and I have no idea why? Are you going to give in to the ease of tradition and the ease of the holiday? Because, well, that's what my kids want to do because all the other kids are doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what my church is doing. We actually don't celebrate that because it's Resurrection Day, all these different things. We get all of that. And we're not being legalistic about that, saying that you can't utilize this event to reach the lost and tell them about the gospel of Yeshua. We understand utilizing that moment. We're saying that what you have to decide in your heart mm -hmm. is who you're going to serve and what you're going to support. Mm -hmm. Just like when Passover comes up at the end of April, those Jews are going to have to decide at that point what they're going to do yeah. and who they're going to commit to. Do not be caught on the wrong side of this. God is so merciful and he is so forgiving and he has extended his mercy for way longer than any of you would have to give people the chance to repent and make the right choice. And we're simply reminding you again, per the Holy Spirit's request, that it's time to make the right choice. Don't, yes. don't get caught one more day with something else in your life that's creating separation, something else that's going to bring judgment against you, something else that's bringing a curse against you. Why would you want that in your life? That's what we're simply saying. And I believe it's time to ask for repentance, even individually, us. And, and... We just did this recently when we, you know, had communion with Israel Hannah. Uh, that's something that you should do very, very often, very frequently. It, this is a time where, where you are supposed to repent in your heart before the Lord for anything that may be wrong in your heart. And so uh, we're saying this is a time to repent uh, for our families individually and to pray for mercy on behalf of this nation that we be spared from the horrors that are about to come. And to address really quickly before we go, the idea, because I know that this is the first thing and it may be the only thing some of you have heard, that we are bringing hate against transgender and all this kind of stuff like that. We are defending the way God created mankind to be. He created man and then he created woman. And he created marriage to be between a man and between a woman. And then when you were born, the gender that you were born, you were born a man or you were born a woman. That is what God decided it to be. And these people who have created these new classes from non-binary to this to that, they're under great deception. And we're not angry 
And we're not sitting here to say, you should not attack these people or bring hate or anything else. They need God's love more than anything else. Because in this moment in time, they just, they're about to get a day dedicated to what Satan is using to deceive them with. They have obviously faced hurt and pain and deception and all this kind of stuff like that. We want God to come into their life and to love on them and to deliver them. And you may be angry about that and spew hate in the comments. And I'm so sorry that you hear it that way. But the fact is that your life was designed by the creator of the universe before he even made this world. And his plans for you were for love and hope and a future. And that is dedicated and detailed out in the Bible. And it wasn't for the deception of not knowing who you are or trying to manipulate or change who you are and all these things. And we're not going to go off into the tangent because this is a very hot topic today. But I'm calling to all of you who do know the truth. Love. Yes. Bring the love, the love that rescued you when you were yet in sin. And that every sin separates you from the Father. It doesn't matter what the sin is. Yeah. Repent today. Celebrate the resurrection of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Share that good news and stand resolute in what you believe in, not out of legalism and not out of attack, but out of a love that will bring those who don't know the truth into salvation and into that fold, spending an eternity with the Father. That's what we're calling for. Well, I feel like I'm supposed to pray right now and uh, I'll pray for myself and you can come into agreement with me concerning your life and your family, Heavenly Father. I ask for forgiveness in the name of Yeshua Jesus, that his blood may cover me and my sins and may cover my household. That we are under the household of faith. Forgive us where we have failed you, where we have missed the mark, where we have not lived completely holy, following that straight and narrow, following your path the way that you designed us to follow, where we have gotten into apathy or lethargy or complacency, where we have uh, placed any idols in our life before you, any distractions that have turned our hearts away from you, I ask that you forgive me, forgive my house, so you forgive our nation for turning our backs on you. It starts with us personally, just like it started with Josiah, just one person standing up, humbling himself before God, saying, I surrender, I'm sorry, God. I have not lived up to the standard that you called me to be. It's not of our own righteousness. You give us your righteousness, Lord. You clothe us in your robes of righteousness. You forgive us. Please take away our sins. Forgive this nation. Spare us from the judgment to come. Give us an extension, a reprieve, a moment of revival, reformation. That more and more hearts can turn to you before you return in the clouds. I ask this, Lord, sincerely in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, that you move with the conviction power of the Holy Spirit to those who are lost to those who have that religious spirit built up within them that think they are good enough, that they have earned it, that they have done enough. There's no one righteous, no, not one. And we declare that today, there's nothing we can do to earn your grace and your mercy. We just ask for it because you give it freely. Do that for me and for my house, for this ministry, Zolhev Ministries that we represent, for the congregations that we represent, our synagogues, our churches, and for our nation as a whole. They, we may turn our hearts back to you. And that we may have an awakening of the Holy Spirit within us so we can change the world for you. In Yeshua's name, amen. All right, guys, we love you. We've been in this spot too long. We're definitely not in Tupelo, Mississippi, so don't come find us. Oh, man.